Hello again. A lot of older people tend to be a little bit sceptical about the whole global warming climate change business. And there's probably two reasons for this. The first is that um, when people my age went to school, the Bible stories were more familiar than they are now. The story of man's wickedness causing a terrible flood that uh, destroyed humanity. That was well known. Uh, we see it in the book of Genesis and it's eerily similar to the modern story where mankind's profligacy and greed is going to cause all the oceans to rise up and drown our cities. So the climate change story really belongs in that same mythic sequence as Noah's Ark. That's probably where the global warming narrative has been lifted from in fact. The other reason of being a bit cautious about all this talk about the planet getting hotter is that older people, people my age and perhaps even a little younger, have seen it all before. The scientific evidence pointing to a dramatic change in climate that will render the planet almost uninhabitable. The only thing is, the last time this story was going the rounds, and I'm not talking that long ago, 40 or 50 years say, the temperatures were all going down instead of up and the real fear that everybody had was of global warming. During the 1960s and 1970s there was a widespread acceptance that an ice age was about to uh, strike us all. Um, science fiction books were written about it. It was a really big thing. Everywhere you looked you could see images of the new ice age. They were on the uh, covers of books. Here's a couple of books with the covers designed to put people in fear of climate change. The fears of a new ice age were made worse because the covers of these science fiction books often seem to be predicting events in the real world. Here's a book which was published in 1962 called The World in Winter. It's about the coming of a new ice age and the cover shows a really scary vision of London covered in snow and ice. Certainly eye-catching. Here's a photograph from a European city that same year. Believe it or not, this is actually Barcelona in Spain. In 1962, many people thought that the long expected ice age had actually arrived. Uh, Britain was particularly badly hit that year by um, weather. In Christmas 1962 it snowed very heavily so rail links and roads, canals were all cut off. The snow was very heavy and the thaw didn't come until Easter 1963 so the snow lay on the ground for two or three months at that time. Even the sea froze around Britain's coasts. Uh, Britain was surrounded by pack ice By the 1970s, the science was settled. World temperatures had been falling since 1940 and all the indications were that a terrible climate emergency was about to strike. By 1975, things appeared very serious. Newsweek published an article that year which summed up all the fears of the scientific community. It included a graph of world temperatures showing how dramatically they were falling. You can see them here. In England that year, the year that that Newsweek article was um, published, 1975, snow fell across much of the country in the summer. On June the 4th, a cricket match between Lancashire and Derbyshire had to be called off, had to be stopped halfway through because an inch of snow fell on the pitch. Same thing happened in Essex with a cricket match between Essex and Kent. Snow fell as far south as London that June and it seemed little doubt to many people that a new ice age was just around the corner. To illustrate this gloomy mood about climate change that existed at that time, I want to read a piece from a book published that same year, 1975, by the Reader's Digest Association. I, not you understand because I regard this as any sort of scientific or academic source. It's just to show you the general mood, 
how people viewed the matter at that time. This is the Reader's Digest book of strange stories and amazing facts. Right, and it says here, records going back to the 14th century show that the Northern Hemisphere has been cooling gradually, producing more severe winters. Since 1940, Britain has experienced five winters with a whole month averaging below freezing point, while there were none between 1896 and 1939. The winter of 1962 was the worst since 1740. And then it goes on with some more of the evidence. Marine biologists stationed at Plymouth say that increasing numbers of cold water fish, such as cod, ling and lemon sole, are invading the sea around Devon and Cornwall. And now they talk here also about the causes, which will sound very familiar to people today. Mankind's own activities may be hastening the return of the ice. The millions of tonnes of dust that pour into the atmosphere from factory chimneys all over the world prevent sunlight getting through and so make the planet colder. You see, it's exactly the same story that we're hearing now. Mankind's actions, particularly industrial pollutants, uh, causing climate change. The only thing is, in 1975, the climate change, the pollution was going to cause the um, temperature to drop. And the evidence was that it was already dropping and causing climate change. Let's look again at the graphene Newsweek, which was published in 1975. Here's some of the stuff that Newsweek had to say. Um, they said that the growing season in England, the grain growing season, was two weeks shorter in 1975 than it had been in 1950. They mentioned the devastating outbreak of tornadoes, the greatest outbreak of tornadoes ever recorded in the United States, where in 1974, 148 twisters killed more than 300 people. The New York Times said, scientists ponder why the world's climate is changing and time magazine said telltale signs are everywhere from the unexpected thickness of pack ice in the waters around iceland to the southern migration of warmth loving creatures this is really curious because again we're seeing all the same things that are being talked about now the thickness of ice in the arctic and about the movement of animals that like warmth and cold only the evidence is all pointing in the opposite direction. They're all showing that the temperature has changed and going down instead of up. And there are warnings that starvation will result because of climate change. Again, we're hearing all that today. Everything, in fact, which we are now seeing in our newspapers. But the only problem was that 45 years ago, in 1975, all that evidence pointed in exactly the opposite direction. Then, almost overnight, everything changed. There might have been snow in June in Britain in 1975, but 1976, the next year, was scorching hot. In fact, there was a run of warm summers and mild winters all across the world. For the next 10 years or so, before we knew it, all the available evidence now indicated not a fall in temperature across the world, but a rise. I want to look now at one other publication by the Reader's Digest Association, which was 15 years after the one we last looked at. This is called Did You Know? by Reader's Digest, published in 1990. And what it tells us now is that the planet is warming up. It says between 1968 and 1989, the world's average temperature rose by 0.8 degrees Celsius. Da, 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 the greenhouse effect. They say computers predict an additional rise in temperature of two to five degrees by 2050. The article um, in the book, Reader's Digest book in 1975, predicted a two and a half degree drop in temperature. So, I mean, this is all really puzzling. So the ice age wasn't coming anymore. Everything was going to get hot instead. I'm not a climate change denier nor am I any sort of scientist. But I can see that something fishy must be going on here. Until 1975, all the scientific evidence pointed to a decline in world temperature and figures were being quoted from as far back as the 14th century, as we saw. So everything showed that the temperature was declining. 
now even the graphs of world temperature which we saw on uh, for example the Newsweek article whereas in 1975 they were all pointing downward now they suddenly all seem to be pointing up and all the evidence shows that from the 14th century instead of getting colder it's all been getting hotter there's something a little bit rummy about this and it's not surprising if people over the age of 50 or 60 view some of the stuff about climate change with a certain amount of suspicion.